Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Sony 70-200mm f2.8 G Master OSS Mark II. Yeah, I have no idea who came up with the name. So let's dive right into it. Now, the name is very clear, Mark II. So what exactly happened? Well, you have to understand, it is a very desirable lens, meaning 70 to 200 is one of those lenses that you will find in every uh, well-equipped uh, photographer's kit, assuming they can afford it. So it's there, it's everywhere. And it's core of Holy Trinity, meaning it's the last lens in the Holy Trinity. So last week we talked about like a, another add-on. This is the same thing, this is a big boy. Now, everybody wants it every time, everywhere. It's And it can be used for every Everything. For example, in wedding photography, you can utilize this. You can do use uh, use this puppy for portraiture. You can even do go a very good level uh, macro photography with this. And uh, overall, you can even do landscape. Uh, you can do surprisingly large amount of things with this puppy. And if you have a good close focus with this, I mean, like it, it's very versatile. Like you will be genuinely shocked how versatile this sort of lenses are. And again, it, it does uh, you know warrant such sort of uh, attention. Every camera company, the moment they release a new camera body and like uh, especially new lineups, they will like. Okay, we'll have this 70 to 200, be it Panasonic, be it Fuji, be it uh, Canon, be it Nikon. Basically, that's the first lens they will release. Now, Mark 1, they released, uh, Sony released, it was very weak against competition, meaning it was so goddamn weak that other uh, people who are using it, they were in, in such a bad shock from Sony. It's like, dude, what the hell you sold us? It's like from optical point, not from autofocus. Let me be very clear. Autofocus was ba awesome back even then. But problem was the optical performance was so bad that people are like, just buy a Canon lens, put an adapter, EF2 um, adapter, and then just use it. That's how bad it was. So it was very weak. And again, it was not that big of a deal simply because in uh, February, 2016 there were no full frame um, you know competition but it's a long time ago and now others have better answer flat or at this point in time you take a, a Nikon's op option and you're like dude Nikon has better mirrorless f uh, full frame like you know lens and every pro will tell you it's about lens not about body it's about lens if you have quality lens that's the puppy that makes the you know your images if lens is garbage output is garbage so lens is the whole point Nikon had better lenses Canon had better lenses so Sony was stuck However, Sony is now back with Mark II and it took lessons. That's the whole thing about engineering. You do it first or you do it better. So they are not the first of releasing a quality lens, but they are like, I'm going to do better. Let's talk more about it. So what are the core upgrades? Well, uh, the first thing now they are Sony is trying to do is in every pro lineup lenses, they are trying to give you de-clickable manual aperture ring. Now it has two advantages. Basically for people who want to do video, they will like click it off and they will have smooth and it has a manual feel and many people will simply say shut up and take my money just for this now there are photographers who are from fuji side of things and they are like you know what or even if they want to you know go back to the good old film slr days they'll like click it on and they're like cut 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 you have aperture control and there will be people like me who's like dude i have no idea how the heck this works so just gonna rotate it to a and i just lock it don't think too much about it so think of this like just addition of this mechanical component it's like it would have barely added a little bit of cost in the lens now this lens can sub satisfy so many people that's the whole amazing aspect of it and now it has hyper fast autofocus now i'm very clear about that even mark one has really good autofocus and sony is genuinely known for its autofocus so what could they do better you have to understand this lens is uh, basically for the next generation so meaning the bodies that are right now they are the step one for this lens lens will outlive the body so by the time uh, a1 mark 2 is there a1 mark 3 then you will actually start to understand why this uh, you know new motor designs was created tl DR of is that is super quick to recovery, meaning no matter which algorithm you use, no matter which sort of system you will use, lens combination, body combination, whatever have you, you will always have a scenario where let's say you are doing a burst mode of a cricketer going, your lens will snap, focus one time. It will happen. It's like, you know, I forgot what's supposed to focus. It happens all the time. Again, it will happen very less and with future algorithms even less, but it will happen. But here's the deal. If a lens inherently is slow, it will take at least like, let's say in 30 FPS mode, you're like, ta -ta -ta -ta, you missed one, like 20, um, after 20, you missed it it will take two three shots and it will try to hunt back it will take waste two or three shots but when you have super fast system it can recover very quickly so instead of wasting three shots it can recover in two or maybe even one meaning all you will have is one blurry fo photo and you're like i got this recovered it's like I got, I got this i'm sorry i got this that's why it's like you know such a important development point of view now m right now you only have like you know a1 which has like 30 fps but imagine 50 fps then this sort of thing will be like damn so be mindful, lens have much longer lifespan compared to bodies. So it's like, you know, 
investing for the future and it is one of the lightest lens in the category now be mindful it's very little light as in like the canon folding lens is uh, almost uh, 20 30 grams more but nikon is like huge nikon is huge and even its own mark versions are like huge so they learned a lot from mark one and fixed almost all issues now it has very close focus meaning uh, if you actually see it like how close you can bring your iphone that's how close you can bring this lens to a, some subject to in order to focus so meaning if you have high enough resolution uh, this lens can actually do some tangibly competent macro photography so that's that's also fixed new lens hood design now they had flower petal design it looks cool and the reason why it has flower petal is simply because it is knows for a fact that um, you know sensors are rectangular so in top words it will be extended outwards so whenever you will see flower petal design you will find this line will be here but on the side it won't because uh, sensor is like you know ultra wide side effect was like it's not very stable as in like if you want to put your lens which every company says like please don't do it but everybody does it it's like put your lens based on the hood it's like not very stable so they're like i know nobody's gonna listen to it just give a clear barrel and now uh, add a rubber silicone rubber coating to it so it can actually last so that's like that's more of a like you know we know what people will do with it so just might as well make it more useful so that's one good thing is there so upgrades wise is not that much but in terms of performance is mind boggling specifically because of the lens system what about the core performance optical performance how they achieved this is basically reducing the elements meaning you this is the uh, mark one design you can see how big and bulky this thing is how it has third, uh, basically 23 glass and in groupings of 18 they are grand total eating group. Now, like, why the heck it has so many? Well, you have a lens. Lens are technically prism. Basically, you cut a lens, you look at only the upside, you'll always find it's a prism. So, it creates a rainbow effect, basically, fringing. Uh, then, you will have a corrector of that that will defringe it. Then, you will have to do that. Every time you're going through a lens, you are like, uh, you will fringe it, you will defringe it, you will fringe it, defringe it, defringe it, blah, 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 blah. So, it happens. It becomes, that's why, like, it has so many lenses. And uh, it was still technically based on DSLR design. So, that's why it has a rotation based uh, autofocus. Now, they are like, dude, why the heck? We have to rotate everything is dropped by wire so what if we directly just have a linear motor done far more efficient now again uh, the placement of the motors and the fact now the lens optics is far more superior compared to you know few years ago so now they have much fewer lenses much fewer correction and overall transmission is much better compared to like let's say you had 100 watt of light energy here it would have only sent 80 it would have been wasted here but now you have 100 here 90 will be there that's the whole point that's why it's lighter and higher performance because optic design has been improved it's much simpler like you remember it this way you have seen iron man one is like how mark one has like all the blah 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 and then mark two is like much more smooth mark one mark two so glass is improved and it has much lighter weight and higher performance and it has class leading performance is almost all record what does that mean that simply means if you have this lens and you are not, not happy with the images you may have defective system it could happen or uh, you you are doing something wrong flat out there is not like oh if i had canon oh if i had sony oh if i had fuji like it's not there anymore this is one of the sony's like good achievement where it's like no corner to corner sharpness be it whatever be it vignetting be it uh, fringing everything is like i got this one of the best so it is amazing in all regards, flat out. And it has very little focus breathing. Compared to Mark 1, it's like almost negligible. Compared to other that are like, you know, video focus lenses, it still has some bit of uh, breathing. However, it's power focal. Now, apparently you can't make a power focal lenses uh, if you do not have like, you know, counter mechanism. Basically, if you zoom in something, you focus it, you are uh, unzooming it. Basically, going to wide angle, focus will drift. Inherently, it will drift. But people are suggesting that the reason why Sony is not drifting, it's behaving like a power focal, it's like electronically compensated. Everything is electrical, so why, why not compensate for it? So that's how people are getting power focal performance. So now, again, if power focal does not mean too much for you, no problem. It's just a good thing. And for videographer, many people will simply say, shut up, take my money just for that power focal factor. So performance wise, it's like, don't think about it. It's like you buy this lens. If you are getting bad performance, you may have defective piece or you are doing something wrong. That is, that's how good the performance is here. So what about competition? Now that's the uh, thing where it is kind of amazing. Is this the first time I can genuinely say flat out, if you want performance, meaning optical performance, autofocus performance, you will find Canon is just not good enough. Now, why the heck that happened? Canon knows how to make lenses. Canon has made amazing DSLR lens. So how the heck this happened? Because of this design, this folding design. Now from a seller's point of view, from a new generation point of view, this is interesting. It's like, hey, you fold it in, you pack it in very easily. That's awesome, but here's the deal. This is heavier than this puppy. So you're not saving that much in your bulk. However, from a longevity point of view, this is a really bad design because think of it this way, like if your lenses is this big, you extend it, 
unless you're pulling vacuum here, air will go inside. Now that means there are seals here. That's awesome. Here's the deal. Seals inherently wear down. Not in day one, not in day two, but over time they do wear down. So you will have uh, over the years, you will have a scenario where dust is starting to suck in. Now, depending on how dusty your environment is, this could be a uh, no problem or this could be like, damn, I'm destroying my lenses every three years. So for many people, many professionals who are especially in dirty environment, they're like, yeah, I'm not buying this. So Canon took a risk on like, you know, uh, compacting their system, but performance wise is really not that good. It's not even compared to Canon's own DSLR lineup. This compactness came out a very expensive cost. And not to mention, you cannot even put uh, basically teleconverters to this. So if you are buying like 7200 and you're like, you know what, what if I buy a teleconverter to get more out of it? Nah, this lens cannot support it. And so that's why I said, Either you do it first or you do it better. So Sony learned from the mistake of this and they're like, okay, what people actually worry about when they're carrying lenses, is not the size of it, it's the weight of it. Can you actually carry it? They're like, okay, we'll make it lighter. And because it's supposed to teleconverter, if you buy this, you can get some good performance. And because the optics designs are so simplified, so high quality that even when you have degradation of 2X because of teleconverter, basically you are taking it and spreading it out, still the center is sharp enough where it's like, dude, still good enough. You will still have a little bit of uh, sharpness loss, but because the starting sharpness was so high, it's like, dude, it's actually tangible. It's actually tangibly useful. So that's awesome. What about Nikon? Nikon is really good. However, it's 300 grams heavier. So even though it's a mirrorless design, that's why I said Sony, I'm pretty sure they would have looked at Nikon system. It's like, what is the biggest fault? Everybody's complaining is heavy. They're like, okay, let's make it lighter. And it does not have magnification, meaning especially for wedding photographers, if you are taking a people's portraits and all, everything is awesome, GG. But the moment you are like, okay, I'm going to focus on a ring, this uh, Sony will give you much better result compared to Nikon. And you will notice it, like, dude, the ring is looking this to this. That's how big difference is there, especially in close magnification. So even Nikon, like, flat out is like weight and the lack of magnification. Many people are just by so, uh, Sony system. And this is one thing. Lenses matter more than the body. If you have good lenses that has good optical performance, that has good usability characteristics, flat out you will buy that system. Does not matter what else is there. So this is the first time you can flat out. If you want the best 72 to uh, 200 mm lens, you have to buy Sony. Flat out. Do not think too much about it. If you can afford it, just buy it. But what if you do not have the money? Just make sure you do not buy Mark 1 unless you want to do bird photography or sports photography. Buy Tamron 1. Tamron, even Tamron has much better optical performance than Mark 1. And it's also lighter. So you may find like, you know, but do not expect that Tamron can beat a uh, Mark 2. No, that's not happening. Mark 1, yes. Mark 2, hell no. But again, good options. And I am really happy that this happened because this will push Canon to, uh, you know, release Mark 2 of this lens. And they uh, may design like, you know, maybe they will learn a lesson from this and they'll be like, you know what, let's uh, have the folding system, but like have a compensator mechanism to have much regain the, you know, optical performance that these things have, fixed focal system has. So that's a really good thing. That's why we want competition. We want uh, every company to push other company in order to become better. So we get cheaper equipment. Otherwise, we'll be stuck with like, you know, paying uh, ludicrously high royalty fees. So competition is good. And flat out, I'm really happy that Sony reached this level because that will force other companies like, we cannot just make a better lens. We have to make better and lighter lenses. I'm happy with that. So this was my presentation on Sony's 70 to 200 G Master F2.8. OASS Mark II lens. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friend, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.